with me You've never left my side You call me back I trust you with my life Not my sin, not my past, not my failure Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Vineyard. My name is Tyler. I'm the worship pastor here, and I just love to welcome you from your homes this week. A little different, but still the same. We love to see you guys. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. Um, we're going to start our service the same way that we always do, by singing. And so if you would just join me, I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit, and we're going to sing together this morning. No matter how far apart we may be, we can still sing together. So Holy Spirit, come. Lord, would you enter 
our homes. Enter this space right now, Lord. We love you. And we just pray that these songs would, would bless your holy name. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, oh Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Our chaos who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who's a nation's with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross lord you would down your life, that I would be set free, so free, oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Jesus. 
Just I sing for all that you've done for me, Lord. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. You've done so much for me. Good morning, everybody. My name is Amos. I'm one of the lead pastors at the Vineyard Church in Chester Springs. My wife, Allison, will be joining me here in a minute. And before we get started here for God Story Sunday, I have a few announcements that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the first is that just as we're all virtual today, December 27, next week, January 3rd, we're going to stay online only. And we've been making these decisions on how we meet and when we meet with a few values in mind. So I just wanted to share that. The first, of course, is that we want to be safe and we want to be loving and we want to honor our local officials and we want to be reasonable. And uh, we really see the church as being an essential business. And for many of us, coming to church in person feels safe and feels like the best way that we can engage. So we've wanted to create that space for you. And of course, we love if you're uh, engaging virtually as well, but we're just, we're trying to really hold those things in tension. And so with a lot of potential high risk exposures on, you know, December 25, December 26, and then New Year's Eve, we just, we wanted to play it safe during the holiday season. Um, the next thing is, and many of you already know about this because you received an email and a text about it, but the church has purchased for every one of you a subscription to Right Now Media, and this is called the Netflix of Christian content. Uh, Emily, our Vineyard Kids pastor, actually talked us into this because the kids' content on its own seems like a really valuable resource. And uh, as I started looking through the adult content, I, I think that it'll be a real gift to you this year. So you can check your email, and if you didn't get an invite, just reach out to me, church at csvineyard.org, and uh, can help you get connected. It's You can watch it on your phone app, you can watch it on your tablets, you can watch it on your Apple TV, Roku TV, whatever. And something that I learned how to do just this week is there's a there's a special place where there's a vineyard channel. So the stuff that I've found especially helpful uh, can go uh, and be viewed right inside the Right Now Media app. And again, if you have trouble finding that, don't hesitate to reach out. But there's a, a short little promo video that we'd like to show for Right Now Media before we continue. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're going to look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right now, media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. So 
So one last thing I want to say, and this will help us transition into our God story theme, is that you guys have been doing an amazing job caring for the Georges. Um, they've been grieving the death of Ken, and we've really all been grieving. But we've, we've seen you guys really show your love and uh, your prayers for them. And so we've actually set up a fund that you can access on our website, csvineyard.org backslash give, where you can give to the George family to help them uh, in this time of real financial stress. And I just, again, I think our church has been doing an amazing job uh, showing love, showing up. Um, you've been sharing stories about Ken on Facebook, and there's no better way to honor someone than to share their stories. You've been showing up to the family with blankets and groceries and meals, and somebody brought Uno cards to them earlier this week. And I just, I am so proud of our church. Yeah, it feels so appropriate that on God's Story Sunday, we're celebrating all the ways that you are loving like Jesus in your care for the George family. And I'm just excited to hear more of those stories. And so, you know, here at the Vineyard, we've made it a tradition to pause our traditional Sunday morning message and take some time on the last Sunday of the year to just reflect back on the ways that God has been good to us and provided for us. And actually, it's more than just a tradition. This is a habit of worship. It's a spiritual practice that has been lived out by Christians for centuries. And this idea of building a pattern of prayer and praise and thanksgiving into our lives really matters. You know, Psalm 40 says, You have multiplied, O Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. And so, of course, none of us can grasp the full picture of God's goodness to us, but one of the reasons that we share God's stories is to widen our vision, to broaden our field of vision, to see and become more aware of the goodness of God in other people and in our world. You know, most of us during this crazy year of 2020 got tunnel vision at some point. We narrowed in on something that was really, really tough and it was like it was all we could see for a while. And some of us are still in that place and that's okay. You don't have to ignore your own pain, but you can learn to hold and to celebrate alongside other people their joy, even in the midst of your own struggle. You know, in fact, I know that as you listen to some of these stories, you're going to have a sense of joy sort of well up in you because um, that's just how gratitude works, right? It ripples out to each other. And that's why we don't keep good news to ourselves. It's best when it's shared. Yeah, so I actually get to start off with the God stories today and share, I guess, more like big picture how the church uh, has been showing the love of Jesus and how God has been moving in us. And when COVID hit, none of us saw that coming, but I saw how the church mobilized so quickly. And one of the one of the coolest things I think we've done since we arrived four years ago was that give one, take one uh, grocery bags to our neighbors. And we like bought groceries for, packed and distributed over 500 bags back in the spring. Can you, that was this year, it seems like years ago, but uh, one of the real practical ways that we showed the love of Jesus, uh, pretty much right after that, we raised like over $7,000 for the St. Edmund's Children Home that cares for kids with uh, cerebral palsy. And that was $7,000 more of groceries with packing and delivery. Um, just really amazing church. Yeah. You guys bought dozens of gifts for the Good Samaritan shelter and we also raised over three thousand dollars to help feed families in Pottstown and those were families who were really depending on school lunches to help get their families fed and we stepped up in big ways with that 
And something that really just happened is we were looking for ways to care for our educators because we know it's been a really hard year for them. And after a short time of prayer, the West Vincent Elementary School came up. And so a few of you gave uh, a real gift to some of the teachers. Uh, 13 teachers signed up to have family photos with some of our really amazing photographers. So, I mean, just really good, exciting stuff that's been going on. It's, uh, I mean, it's been a lot. And uh, I feel like we're only just scratching the surface of what we could be sharing and what the church has done and what God has done through the church over the last year. Uh, but now we're really excited to hear from some of the God stories that you sent in over the last few weeks. Hi, I'm Trish Cazola. My best God story for this year, I was going on a photo trek to a junkyard in New Jersey. And as I was driving, I felt like I was going to be saying the words, can we pray? Didn't know what was up with that, but I thought, I'm just going to go with this. So I got there early and I was talking to one of the other participants who also arrived early. She told me she was going to be having hip replacement surgery. Um, I got that nudge and I looked at her and said, I don't know if you're a believer, but can I pray for you? She enthusiastically said yes. And so there um, on a Sunday morning in a junkyard in New Jersey, we're praying that she has a successful hip replacement surgery. Um, after that happened, I just thought, give me more. This is, this was great. So it was a, a wonderful way to feel that immediate uh, gratification that God said, hey, I'm going to use you. And I didn't even have to wait to figure out what, how he was going to use me. It was right there. Hi, Vineyard Church. We are the Sowers, and today we are going to be uh, talking about our God stories. So 2020 was a hard year for us all, um, but I'm particularly reflective of God's provision over our marriage, over our relationships. We've just experienced such blessings of healing um, for our physical bodies as well as healing in our relationships with each other. So that is definitely a blessing to be thankful for. What I'm thankful for this year is uh, God's provision in regards to my career and uh, my job situation. Uh, God really opened up a door uh, in May to provide me a job that I didn't think I was going to have. Um, and he provided me a lot of flexibility. My name is Grayson Weller, and my God moment um, was when, <clears throat> right before I was about to go to my friend's house, I really wish I had my um, like toy I ordered to go there first. Um, and right before I was about to leave, there's a package at the door, because I prayed and prayed and prayed um, that day to try to have it come two days early. And it, that was it, two minutes before um, I left to go there. And it was probably one of the funnest times I had in my life. I'm Janet Hermans, and in March of 2019, God put a desire in my heart to seek him wholeheartedly. I had done that years and years ago before I had children, and now I was an empty nester and I wanted to do that again. And I believe that God put that desire there, but it seemed impossible because I had so many good things in my life, activities, responsibilities, and people. And how could I possibly do that? And then the pandemic hit. It was almost exactly a year later, in March 2020, with all the shutdowns. And I knew that this was my opportunity to sit with Jesus, to take chunks of time, to listen to him, to read the scriptures, to pray, to not be in a hurry, and to enjoy him and be with him. Sometimes Jesus and I would go places and I got the distinct impression that he was leading me to see certain things that he wanted me to see. Things that he knew that I would enjoy so much, like a bunch of baby goats who were so new they hadn't been tagged yet, and a turtle laying eggs. 
a herd of alpacas, a huge oak tree growing out of a rock, and one of the most gorgeous sunsets I had ever seen. And I realized that Jesus is the creator. This is the stuff that he has made, and he, he loves that I love the things that he has made. And he loves me, and he loves you. Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Russell. About two weeks ago, uh, someone on Facebook reached out and said that um, he was feeling really dark and really needed some people to reach out to him. I didn't know him very well in high school, actually not at all, but uh, I thought about it and then I ignored it. And then I saw Amos speaking on Sunday via YouTube and something he said compelled me to reach out, it was almost like, well, it was like um, God was telling me I, I should do this. So I messaged him and immediately he called me on messenger. I was like, ah, <laughs> the only people I talk to really are my mother and my sister on the phone. I'm not a big phone talker, but I almost ignored it. And then I heard that voice again saying, you need to answer this. So I answered it and I prayed in my head for the right words. It's really hard to speak to people, especially people you don't know well about death um, and difficult things like that. But um, he was crying at first and it was really amazing because we ended up talking for like an hour and a half. And um, I'm in a Bible study right now with CBS studying John and I had just read about the woman at the well and he mentioned something from it. He's a believer and we talked about that for half an hour. It was really cool. And um, we hung up and I've spoke to him a few times since and later he said to me, he said, I was really dark that night. Um, you really made a difference in my life. And I can't take the credit for that. I'm really grateful Amos shared his message because, you know, we may have saved someone that day together in Christ. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Have a happy new year. Love you and miss you all. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Winnie and I've been attending the Win Year since 2017 after I got married to my wonderful husband here. This is Austin and this is our beautiful daughter Nina. So back in 2018, uh, me and my husband were trying for a baby and then things were stressful for us since we were putting so much pressure on that and we had some parental pressure as well to have a baby and it was not working out but then I did get pregnant um, in 2019 beginning um, unfortunately I had a miscarriage in March of 2019 so that didn't go well with me um, I was stressed out I, I was soaked up in sorrow and I felt it was so unfair that it had happened to me and I didn't know whom to turn to and then um, we kept trying. It took me a while to get out of it as I felt I was left in darkness back then. But we had our friends and families praying for us and then I fortunately could come out of it. Um, and then we got pregnant late to 2019. And then here we have a beautiful daughter, Nina. Um, we are so blessed this year amidst all the COVID and everything. <laughs> Uh, we're so thankful to God and one thing I learned from this would be that God is always faithful in keeping up his promises and that we should never lose hope. Merry Christmas everyone. Hi, my name is Austin. Um, we just want to share this, um, what many had shared as a, uh, as a message of hope. Um, we believe that God is faithful. And we believe even the, through trials that uh, he always comes through uh, miraculously. And we just pray that uh, God will be faithful to you as well. Hello, my name is Thel. The Lord has done so many wonderful things for me this year. My family and I did so many fun trips, even though we were limited by COVID. I also went on a school field trip with my classmates. So be encouraged. The Bible says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Have a nice Christmas and goodbye. Um, so today um, I put the chicken in the water trough and, and I saw I can swing 
Well, cut it, and then we fed some parrot on it. Then it got better. How did it get better? Um. It was in pretty bad shape, wasn't it? Yeah, and then we put it in fresh air, and then it came alive. And what did we do? What did we do with it? We we took it in the room and blew it dry, didn't we? Yeah, and then now he's better. Look. Yeah. So can I say? Yeah. And what's your version? So I gonna say something. Um. So Charlotte and Charlotte and my Jenna, my neighbor, they got the chicken and then we prayed for it, and like and all of a sudden it got better and it's starting to walk and his eyes are getting open. Wow, that was a she's miracle. She's not 100% yet. It was a but miracle. But she's doing much better, huh? Yeah. I was a We surprised. had the dryer all off with the blow dryer, and she was barely breathing, right? Take a picture. And then you guys asked me to pray for it, and you guys prayed with me, and voila, we have a healthy chicken. Oh, yeah. Even your family, to Eddie. Um, for our, our God story this year, I would just like to say that God has been providing for us throughout all the many changes that have happened this year. Um, especially financially, we've, me and Christy both had to stay home for a long time, um, like many others, and throughout that whole time, we never felt any stress about where our income was coming from we were provided for and taken care of and we always felt that the Lord was going to provide and he did there was many instances where where we needed something or something had, was coming up and out of you know somewhere that we weren't expecting um, the money would show up um, we found I had to find new work and the Lord provided that very quickly for me um, and most recently with this barn fire that we just had, you know, that was, we lost a lot, but the Lord has already been showing that he's going to provide. And many people have, from our church, from many of you guys and family members and everything have just been there for us and, and provided some stability financially for us when we need it. The way in which uh, God has been moving in my life this past year is bringing a, a thankfulness and a joy out of a time that it's really, really hard. And the source of that has been the way in which he has been using our pastors to pull our church together and provide a uh, an experience of, of worship and tying into God's Word and, and community. Um, it's all electronic, but they're doing it, and God has been blessing me through it. Um, who would have known back when you came on, Amos and Allison, that we'd be going through a time like this? And your spirit, your giftedness, your character, and your creativity has really been a blessing to me. And it, when I experience these times every week, it does bring joy and thankfulness for you. And uh, Tyler and Emily, um, your ministry, your leadership, this past Sunday was overwhelming. It was so um, helpful in the time of morning of a dear friend thank you so much so my God story is around the word joy which was the word I believe God gave me for 2020 and last winter I was in church and during worship he gave me this picture of a deer walking on this mountain ridge um, and the Sun was shining and yet down below in the valley is all of this just junk swirling around kind of chaos and after that worship service, I went up for prayer, and the two women who prayed with me um, confirmed the message God had given me by, um, because God gave one of them the same picture. 
and um, the message was just to stay focused on that path in front of me and not to keep my eyes um, down below in the valley but to keep my eyes looking up fixed on him and what's ahead and so I kind of forgot all about that and during COVID um, along with probably a lot of you I'm just managing all of my losses and trying to figure out life and then God reminded me recently about my word joy for 2020 and he brought me back to Habakkuk 3 which is um, uh, a passage in the Bible the prophet is speaking while the children of Israel are in exile and he says there is no fruit on the vine there are failed crops there are no herds in the stalls and yet I will rejoice I will have joy in the God of my salvation he makes my feet like deer's feet and he makes me walk on high places and God reminded me that my joy can only be constant when I have it in a source that is constant, which is Him. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are, you are a King, that you are a God that shows up. Lord, thank you that you are one that moves among us and that creates stories. And thank you for the community at which we can share those stories with one another. Lord, your work is awesome. Your work is wonderful. We just want to bless that here today. Thank you, Father, for all of the wonderful stories that you've brought into our lives. Amen. joy, here in our sorrow, there in our past, there in tomorrow, here in our wine, here in our drinking, here in our bread, here in our breaking, you're always with us. You're within us in all of our lives you're always with us so now we will sing and now we will 
sing with all that's within us in all of our lives you're always with us you're always with us you're This next song just beautifully represents all of the stories that we have of God moving in our lives and all of our own stories. And so let's sing Beautifully Made. I've been raised You're calling me I'm coming home You're calling me I'm coming home I've been raised You're calling me I'm coming home You are calling You're calling me I'm coming home You are no longer strangers to your arms We are no longer strangers to saved us. We're no longer strangers. We're no longer strangers to your heart. Someone exiled. Exiled by sin, separated by my transgressions, we're not welcomed in. You're calling me, I'm coming home. We are no longer strangers to your. saved us. We're no longer strangers. We're no longer strangers to your arms. We are no longer strangers to your arms. We are no longer strangers to your arms. By 
by your grace you have saved us we're no longer strangers we're no longer strangers to your arms sing father i'm coming home father
worthy of every song we could ever sing and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Lord. and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe oh we live for you and Jesus Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Lord, we live for you. Oh, we live for you.
Amen. Jesus, thank you for all of the wonderful stories of this year. Lord, I pray a blessing unto everyone. Blessing unto everyone as we enter this new year. Lord, be near. We need you, Father. Be near to us. Lord, help us to love those around us. Help us to help those around us. And continue to share and spread your story far beyond ourselves. Amen. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, we bless you. We send you off and have a happy new year. We will see you in 2021. Bye. Venga tu reino, venga tu 